completely milky white. Around seven days later, it develops into a pupa. During this stage, the larva feeds on nutrients secreted by worker bees. Before maturing into a pupa, the larva undergoes six molts. Upon maturing into an adult bee, organs in its body start developing, although the skeletal structure remains soft. Then pigments are secreted and the eyes develop. At this stage, their bodies gradually shrink and fuzz begins to grow. The organs are now fully formed and they fly out of the hive once their wings mature. This process takes around 8 to 13 days as each bee develops at a different time. From egg to bee, male bees take 23 days, the worker bee takes 20 days, and the queen bee only takes 16 days. Once the bees fly out of the hive, they are destined to work every day. The bee society has a clear division of labor. The queen's task is to lay eggs and be responsible for reproduction. The male bee's task is to mate with the queen, a process that costs them their lives as their reproductive organs are torn off by the queen after mating. Worker bees have the most diversified roles. They're responsible for everything except mating. They begin working since they are born, and their roles change as they age. Three days after birth, they are responsible for incubating eggs. Six days later, they secrete nutritious to feed the larvae. Twelve days later, they start cleaning the hive and building comb. At 18 days, they venture out to collect pollen. The fuzz on their legs assists in collecting pollen, which they stick to the hairs on their hind legs. When the weight of the pollen reaches one-third of their body weight, they return to the hive and unload their cargo. It produces one kilogram of honey in its life, means to collect 10 kilograms of nectar, covering a distance of 320,000 kilometers, equivalent to circling the Earth eight times. This high-intensity work results in a short average lifespan of only 30 days, but it's better than being killed by the queen bee after mating. A bee's life begins with... During... All oh, praises. First and foremost, I want to give the double honors and all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the most high God, and Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus the Christ. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who will rule the world through the Spirit, teaching His word and believing His word to the best of their ability. Lord willing, the most high continue to put on a spirit to endure. And the mighty shallow to the hopeful elect, scatter four corners of the earth in and out of congregations, teaching this word and believing this word to the best of their ability. Lord willing, the most high increase them in the knowledge and understanding. Shallow on to the wives and the single sisters that are believers of his word. Lord willing, the most high continue to put it in your spirit to endure. And to continue to pursue to be a loving and silent and virtuous wife. The Lord willing, the most I have mercy on the other brothers and sisters that's not in faith. Now, this Lord willing is a quick, straight to the point lesson. Um, it might be titled Look at the Bees, or um, We Not the Only Ones Working for Yahweh Shem Yahushai. And um, when you go into this, it's very beautiful how life you know is given you know it's, it's even beautiful to see how the lord created other things um and we all have a job right we all have a job um the last part of the video was very key um let's see if we can get it 20,000 kilometers, equivalent to circling the Earth eight times. This high-intensity work results in a short average lifespan of only 30 days, but it's better than being killed by the queen bee after mating. See, so some bees rather be uh, the worker bees instead of uh, having to have the job to mate with the queen and die right after, right? Um, these bees rather be workers, right? And, and, and to provide, right? So um, this lesson is really going to go into, you know, uh, we all have to work, right? The, the righteous against the wicked, right? And that's what this is about, right? Some verses I'm going to go right in the scripts. I mean, right on the app. And some of them, just to make it quick, I might uh, just go through my physical uh, Bible. So this is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Now that is a B. And it's just beautiful to see how bees are working. The Lord tells us to study the ants. Ants work too. A lot of 
the creations of the Most High work. Right? This is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, thou lazy. Consider her ways and be wise. Right? Be wise at the work that ants do. Right? Don't be lazy. Ants are always working. It says, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of the sleep? Right? You lazy. Right? You see that this angel, I mean, Salaki, that these bees have a queen that they follow. Right? Us, as, you know, Israelites, we're supposed to follow Yahweh Bashim Shai, our power, right? And this is the man, right? Um, Yahweh Bashim Shai deserved to be praised. He deserved to be uh, followed. He deserved to be observed. He 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 deserved to be seeked and watched, right? <clears throat> uh, we didn't choose this life, you know. Let alone, um, it's it's all Yahweh Bashim Shai. Uh, that reveals this truth to us. As soon as it's revealed, we're, we're grown in this thing like babies. And as soon as we're able to talk, the Lord uh, uh, basically gives you the go. Go teach this word, right? As long as you can bring uh, the, the right information, go usher in the hopeful elect, right? People might say that they tired of this captivity, then do the work of Yahweh Bashim al Right or die, right? Let me get this one too, right? Because if if you don't do the work, you can't eat, and these bees is working. You know, if I can't, uh, if I'm not gonna be the one to lay with the bee, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And get and get all my limbs ripped off. You know what? I'm gonna uh, put my brick in. Right. This is Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat, right? Our work is going to always be against the enemy, right? Because you have to feed the flock, right? Let alone you have to walk this righteous act, right? Because you have to, we're teachers even when we're not teachers, right? You have to walk like somebody is watching and observing your every walk, right? This is how you know we all work. Right. The devil has a short period of time. I think this is probably it right here. Okay, right. This is Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Destruction, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, right? The devil means a liar, manipulator, and deceiver. He has come down uh, unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time, right? And they're, they're ushering in the karagma because right now that light switch is, is coming off. They seeing it. Oh, man, we, man, we, man, we, we didn't even pay the bill. Even if they pay the bill, the jig is up, right? Everybody, every emperor, every kingdom had appointed time to rule. As soon as the Lord already show his warnings, you better you better collect what you can collect. Because all through history, the righteous and the unrighteous was planted, right? And through the spirit, we're always against one another, right? Let me just get this. This is Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 20 to 21. It says, now. The God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Yahushai, that great shepherd of the sheep, right? Yahushai is the top shepherd, right? He's the top shepherd for the for, for the Lord's people. It says, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, 
make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Right? What our purpose is to do the most high's will. Right? This is that's our work, right? Being a husband, right? Being a father, being a brother, right? Because the brotherhood is in more important than the other ones that I said, being a father and a husband, right? Because the more the brotherhood is strong, right, the more the brothers can have uh uh one another's back, right? When a brother's falling off, if a brother loves you, he's gonna he's gonna be there to correct you or be there to 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 lift you back up. You could be falling falling off of your horse and the brotherhood is there to, you know, to 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 put that 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 foot on your neck, right? To make sure you're not slipping or slacking. Right? Now with the family, yes, a, a man, the Lord don't want a man to be alone, right? With the family and the kids, the man get love outside of the brotherhood. Right? And then it still makes him be occupied, right? Because the enemy works all angles. And the enemy is working on the men and the women. And they're even working on the children. So the more we raise ourselves up to be the husband and the men that the Lord wants us to be, um, uh, we'll be able to lead our house even better, right? And uh, with the enemy, he's not going to like a house in order, right? And this is why he hits you with the child support, the, the food stamps, and you know all these things that hit us. And that's why I believe it's First and Second uh, Corinthians, the seventh chapter, where Paul tells you that uh, men will have trouble, you know, through the flesh, especially if they get a wife, right? Because what comes, you know, that affection in order. Uh, a woman might say, man, you 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 chill uh, more with your brothers than you do me, right? It's because they want cuddle time, right? But this this ministry is all about work, work, right? Did you put your brick, brick in, right? Luke, the 19th chapter, are you occupied, right? Um, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, and I'm going to go... To a few, or Lord willing, it's not too long, but you never know how the spirit, you know, uh, make uh, make this, you know, he the spirit just be making it flow. This is Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 4 to 6. It says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of Yahweh Shemashai came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith Yahweh Shemashai? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Let alone all the potters, uh, I mean, all the clays that are uh, Yahweh Shemashai mold, right? Everybody is a part of that clay, right? From from the most wicked, wickedest witch, witch of them all, Esau, right? To to the most holy uh, Israelite, right? The Lord made us for what He made us for. Some for honor and some for dishonor, right? And guess what? The ones that's for honor is gonna always be against the ones that are for dishonor. Let alone when the men of the Lord are teaching to usher in the hopeful elect and, and prophesy the downfall of his kingdom through the spirit. They're against the wicked, uh, uh, their, their, their wicked um, Israelite, fellow Israelites. Right. All Israel is not Israel. The ones that's not moving like Israel are going to be destroyed. Right. And the hopeful elect are teaching against the sins or the wickedness of this world. Right. And the other half of Israel are going to be uh, uh, basically having the, the best time of their life in wickedness or the things of this world. Right. This is the book of Sirach. 
Ecclesiasticus, the 33rd chapter, which is a very good chapter to, uh, you know, to dig into, right? I'm going to read this in the GNT, make it very plain for you guys. It reads, every human being was made from the earth, just as Adam was. But Yahweh Shemaf Shai and his wisdom made them all different and gave them different tasks. This is how you know. If we're all different, we're all, uh, uh, when Yahweh, when Yahweh give Yahweh Shai that go, the Lord is going to see us occupied in that task, right? And it's really the spirit. The spirit knows what the Lord had in store for you. That's why. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 to, ten, uh, to 11 right we can't remember our past life our former lives right just like how Elijah uh, John the Baptist he didn't know that he was Elijah but through the scriptures and the prophecies that came that, that was playing playing this role this man was walking out his lot right so regardless if we wicked or righteous, we're walking out that task that the that the Lord put on your spirit, right? It says, oh, and it's another thing, like when the Lord said, like say if we get taken to the synagogues or you know when they about to persecute us, He say, you know, don't worry about the words that you're gonna speak, right? It's because the Most High already orchestrated everything that was gonna happen. He knew that some of us is going to get taken up or get murdered. And he knew that some of us might be like Stefan or like this person to say, oh, this is I've been waiting for. for um, I've been waiting for the day that I get persecuted. Right. And we might say those words, but it was already implanted in our spirit that we was going to say it. It's just everything has to play out. Right. Verse 12. He blessed some, making them honored and holy. Holy means set apart, kodash, right? And it's really the hopeful elect of Israel that are that are holy, let alone they're honored too, because if the Lord is increasing you in the wisdom, knowledge, or understanding, right there and then the Lord is is is, is honoring you. Hey, you could be possibly one of the hopeful elect, Lord willing, right? It says, keeping them near him, others he cursed, humbling them, removing them from their positions. And he did humble Israel, right? If the elect is waking up now, seeing that we're, we're, we're low, low. Wait, when you go to Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, the Lord said he set up kings and removed kings. So that shows that the Lord removes people from their positions, right? Look, look at women. They, they want to be married, but they don't want to follow the order. Right. It doesn't matter what husband you have, how he run his house is how the hell he run his house. The Lord will put that spirit on him that he might get tired. And he'll divorce your ass. Right. The Lord is not playing about his sheep, which is really the men. His flock is the men. And underneath the men is, yes, is the other men. But is you women. Right. The, the, the men are going to be more precious than any ruby. We're going to be over the most coldest, finest women. We're going to be worth more than any rich person you ever know. Right. Verse 13, it says, just as uh, just as clay is in the potter's hand for him to shape as he pleases. So we are in the hands of our creator for him to do with as he wishes. Right. So whoever is wicked, whoever is doing the folly against your how about or with the Lord commanded. Right. The Lord molds you that way. You worry you thinking, well, why do I do this? Man's going to the Lord, let alone your heart, the vice of your steps. But the Lord directs your steps. The Lord directs your ways. Right. Fourteen. It says good is the opposite of evil. Life is the opposite of death. And sin is the opposite of devotion to Yahweh Shemel Shai. Read that again. Good is the opposite of evil. Life is the opposite of death. And sin is the opposite of devotion to Yahweh. Think about it. The Most High has made everything in pairs. Each thing the opposite of something else. 
Um, when you go into KJV, it says he said one against another, right? Let me see. Let me see if I can actually read that for you so you can see it. Um, where is it? Right. Verse 14. It says good is set against evil, life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. Right. So if you put in on the shoes, right, of the righteous, guess what? Your job is to go against the ungodly, right? Your job is to go against evil, right? Your job is to go against death, right? Now, if you wicked, the spirit is going to already be uh, uh, on you to go against the good, right? You have a spirit of death. You're going to go against life, right? If you, you, you push sin or you're filled with sin, right? You're going to be against the godly, right? This is plain and simple, right? It's either you righteous or you wicked. And either one you wish, you're against the opposite trait, right? And that's work. Work is to be the righteous. Oh, definitely, you should try to pursue to be the righteous. And work is to be the wicked. Go a a examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. If, if you say you believe in the Lord and you see that you're not working out the righteous work, then that's bullshit that you be doing. Uh, let's play basketball. Let's play football. Let's travel. Let's get on the game. Let's go to all these movies. Let's do all these dates. Let's cuddle. Let's go through every woman. Let, 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 uh, let's talk to this dude. Oh, he didn't make the cut. Let's go to another dude. Before you go do all that bullshit, find out what, what side you on. And, 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 and work. If you're not working for your how about shit or shy and you just pleasing your own self, you're not going to benefit shit. And the only thing that's going to be beneficial for you is things of this world. Because anybody that don't uh, play their role that the most high orchestrated for you, the wicked is going to automatically be wicked. But if the Lord placed on you to be righteous and you're not doing it, you're a sad case. Yeah, like I said on Facebook, you're a freaking background character, right? We have work to do, right? Let alone, let me get this too, right? This is uh, Sirach chapter 30, verse 3. It says, he that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him, right? This just shows you that you know, if, if a righteous man is teaching his son, he grieveth the enemy. The enemy want our kids dumb because that's who that's who they are trying to attack. The youth, the next generation. So if we teach our sons, the enemy going to be, damn, why he teach you? They're going to be mad. That's our work. Your work is to teach your kids so that your enemy don't uh, uh, make their brain go into pudding. Right. When you go to Deuteronomy, the, the sixth chapter. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou uh, risest up and when thou shalt bid them for a sign upon thy head and they shall be a frontlet between thy eyes. Right. Our work, if you are walking that righteous walk, you're supposed to be teaching your kids, teaching your sons, right? Right? I'm about to get this uh this little side preset, right? I'll put it on here. Put it on here for a little bit. Put it on the bees real quick. I already forgot where I was going to go. I'm going to go to this one. This is uh, Luke, the 19th chapter, starting at verse 12. It says, and he said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. This is work that this king, that this certain noble king, which is Yahweh Shai, tell him to occupy till I come. When Yahweh Shai come back, he's going to see who's been occupied, right? Uh, which one is it? 
Is this the one that I wanted? Uh, right? We got we got work to do. Right? I got another one. Right? This is a uh, this is a uh, Luke the twelfth chapter. Right? This is going into Yahweh Shai encourages his disciples. So pay very close attention, Lord willing. Verse one. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, in so much that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, right? How can we beware, right? That means the Lord is telling, we have to watch. You have to observe what these Pharisees, which your fellow brothers are doing. Right. Make sure you don't have the leaven that they have. Right. And that leaven going to sin. Right. Because Passover. Right. Let's actually go into a preset with that. Right. This is our work. That's why I said Second Corinthians um, 13 and 5, man. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Right. This is uh first Corinthians chapter five. Uh, I'm going to say that five. It says. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Yahweh Shemal Shai. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, right? Too much, uh, 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 a little leaven is going to, is, is going to leaven up the whole lump, right? Just a little leaven, just a little sin. Yo, I'm not, it will, it will pollute you, right? Verse seven is the point. Purge out therefore, therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Hamashiach, our Passover, is sacrificed for us, right? Every day if you believe that Yahweh Shai died for uh, the children of Israel, the whole for elect, right? You should be purging out the leaven, kill it. Every day, this is your work. Your work is to purge the old man. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, 22 to 25. This is your work. The wicked has a short time. So they, they're going to be busy bodies, right? The wicked are going to be busy bodies, right? You know what? Let me get that because I got, I got some other precepts uh, in the scriptures I want to get. But uh, let's just go here. Busy bodies. Right? This is second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Right? That's their work. Their work is to be busy bodies. Let alone they're gonna be a distraction for some for, for some slow nigga, some slow Jake, and they're gonna be busy bodies. Right. Because uh, uh, the company that you keep, a lot of us, we keep the wrong company and we, we become a part of that. Right. Our work is to always observe. Right. Our work is to confess the name of Yahweh Shemal Shai or in the midst of the angels. Yahweh Shemal Shai is going to is going to confess that he don't know you. Right. I got another one. Uh, but I'm going to read this one in the GNT, right? This is Luke, the 12th chapter, verse 13 to 21. And this is going into the parable of the rich fool. So, Lord willing, I paid very close attention. It says, a man in the crowd said to Yahweh, our teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. Yahweh Shai answered him, friend, who gave me the right to judge or to divide the uh, property between you two? And he went on to say to them all, watch out and guard yourselves for every kind of greed, because your true life is not made up of the things you own, no matter how much you, uh, you may be. I mean, uh, no matter how rich you may be. Right. The things that you own. Hey, that goes back into people that's laying riches uh, on earth. 
right? And they're not paying attention to the riches in heaven, right? Verse 16, it says, then Yahushai told them this parable. Parable means an earth, a earthly story, but a heavenly matter. There was once a rich man who had land which bore uh, good crops. He began to think of himself. I don't have a place to keep all my crops. What can I do? This is what I will do. He told himself, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones where I will store the grain and all my other goods. Then I will say to myself, lucky man, you have all the good things you need for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, enjoy yourself. But the Most High said to him, you fool, this very night you will have to give up your life then who will get all these things you have kept for yourself yahweh concluded this is how it is with those who pile up riches for themselves but are not rich in the most high sight right if you're not laying riches uh uh, uh spiritual riches in the kingdom uh, the, the shit that you got here is pointless Right, our job is always to 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 work for Yahweh by Shema Shai. Right, let me just get this. This is Colossians chapter three, verse one and two. It says, "If ye then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above, where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. Set your affections on things above, and not on things, uh, uh, not on things on the earth." Right, the righteous is constantly. Uh, uh, seeking to set riches up in heaven, man. They're seeking the things above and not the things that is mortal of uh, puny earth, right? Let's get to Matthew. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Verse 19, it says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do of corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. That means work. Fucking work. Right? You even a lot of man, I can't wait to see Jesus. Work. And I'm not saying uh Christianity work, right? The real Christians of Yahweh Shema Shai are going to be occupied in his ministry, right? The real children of the Lord are going to hear videos, right? They might be watching a video, right? They might be studying their notes. They might be reading every four hours. They, you know, let me let me get like two chapters. Let me take a break. Let me go. The 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 ones that want to be righteous, they're going to try to flood their temple, their their this this dumb flesh. They're going to try to flood it with so much spiritual knowledge, right? Because you don't want to be of the flesh, let alone you have a job. The bees has a job. It's either you 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 lay it up with the bee or you're a worker. Which one you want to be? The workers, they're going to die after they bust that nut. I'm just being straight honest with you. After you bust that nut, you're dying, right? But if you're a worker, you're going to work for a point. You're going to work for a point of time. But there's levels to this, right? You're going to do that. Then you're going to go here for this one day. Then the third day. Then the fourth day. Then the fifth day. is levels to work. Right? Even laying with the queen is work. Right? But choose this day on whom you're going to serve. Right? The most high comes with all different type of positions. You want to be a manager. You want to be maintenance. You want to be a, a, a top flight attendant. or Whatever the hell you want to be. Right? All you got to do is be serious for your how about shit me out with Right. And let, let me just get this last one. Let me get this last one because I was thinking about it, too. Right. You go to Genesis, the 25th chapter. Dang. Oh, man. Uh, let me just get this. Man. Dang, man. I shouldn't have said that. This is Genesis chapter 25. Uh, let's see. Verse 22, it says, And the children struggled together within her and said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire Yahweh Shemal Shai, 
and Yahweh shall march out and send unto her. Two nations are in thy womb, and two men are a people shall be separated from thy bowels. One people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right? So this is already showing. This is the, the elder's job is to serve the younger. Right? Um, where is it at? Right? Because they were fighting in the womb. Uh, let me see. Wait, I'm trying to find the, the verse. So like he, uh, um, okay, yeah, verse 26, I said at 25, and it says, And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and he called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. Uh, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, right? And that 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 shows you uh authority, right? That shows you uh 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 authority, right? Let alone that is his work. His work is to rule, right? Uh, the the second son, his work is to rule, right? Grabbing that heel was a form of rulership. But for Esau, servitude, his job is to serve, right? That's why we see in Ecclesiastes, we see servants on horses. You see Levitations, chapter 5, servants have ruled over us. That is their job, to serve, right? Serve the men of the Lord, right? It, 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 it always been all the way from Cain and Abel. You look at Jonah, the Lord told him to cry against that city. That was his work. He didn't want to do it. The Lord, the Lord chastised him and had him get swallowed up by a big fish, right? That was his work. Then he had to cry to the Lord while he was in hell. The Lord let him out. And what did he do? Man, no, the Lord, serious, man. I'm going to have to do this. And guess what he did? Sucked it up and did the work, right? Stop freaking complaining. You make your ministry about debunking Israelites or... Or you just out here trying to take the bag just to teach something good, right? Grow some damn McNuggets, right? Your sisters, just be quiet and just listen to the word to the best of your ability. If the spirit, if you don't like the person that's teaching, if the, if you don't go to the next one, right? Because the number one thing you do when you come here, your, your job is to listen. Shut up and listen. That's work too. Listening, right? So, Lord willing, Lord willing, after this video, you can understand everything that the Lord created works from the grass to the sun to the moon to the air to the angels to the atoms, every bacteria, everything works. But you simple niggas, every other create, everything else the Lord made is working more than, than your ass. Even even Satan himself, the real demon, is working, working, working. That damn yeah, Edomite working. Right? But uh low willing, this is edifying, straight to the point. Always observe and watch the Lord's creation. So with that, say Quan Yasarella, it's your brother Dagabar. Till next time. Shalom.